Hello everyone, this is Amanda Kulong with TechZulu.com and I am here with Eric Pullier, CEO of Service Mesh. How are you? Good, good, thanks. How so I'm, I'm great. So we've got some great news apparently. Digital Family is honoring you with an Outstanding Achievement Award for all of the contributions that you've done here in Southern California for the tech community. So um, that that's coming up this week. Um, you've done some amazing things here in SoCal and obviously beyond, and we'll, we'll get into some specifics of that. But I really want to talk about the fact that you are defining serial entrepreneur. I mean, come on, you've founded over or co-founded over 15 companies. You've raised over $500 million for them. You clearly know what you're doing. <laughs> that's right? not clear. The, other, the first part of the sentence we can agree on. <laughs> oh, come many, on, Eric. Many would contest the rest. <laughs> all right, all right. But, you know, given given this background, and we're talking across different industries, I mean, we're talking rich media presentation, enterprise professional services, what are some of the others? I mean, you've, you've done this across multiple industries. Yeah, I think the industries um, have been uh, varied, but at the same time, there's some consistent themes, and the, right. the themes have to do with the application of technology to various sure. business processes or business sectors, and trying to create a, a new world order in some ways. I know that sounds lofty, but it really <laughs> is trying to disrupt the way things work right. and to apply technologies to do something really cool that could make an impact. Sure, and sure. each company along the way has set off with those lofty ambitions. Uh, you know, why do something if you don't have those? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, some of them have worked out pretty well. And uh, to the extent that um, the technology is just increasing in terms of its velocity and mm -hmm. uh, its uh, ability to disrupt, uh, I think now is a better time than ever to do this stuff. So it's, it's a good time to be uh, addressing the community and encouraging people to, to get sure. to it. Sure. What would you say to the people that are new to the community? Where should they even begin? If they have an idea, if they are passionate about starting a, you know, their own company, what's the first thing they should do here in L.A.? Well, I really think the first thing you should do is literally do it because okay. there used to be a semi-sensical concept that you should plan and do business planning, uh, raise money, things like that. Uh, but even then, back, back in the Stone Age when we started, <laughs> there was uh, really not a lot of sense to that model because you know, things change dramatically. Right. And the way that you learn what the right thing to do is, is by doing it, by engaging with customers, by getting feedback, and by iterating against your original set of uh, assumptions. Okay. But now, even more than ever, this is true. Because it used to take us a lot of money to do this stuff, right? Uh, it's unbelievable how much things have changed right now. Mm -hmm. And the amount of money that it used to take us, I mean, it used to take millions of dollars to try out certain types of ideas. And today, we're talking about the uh, uh, smallest fraction of that because so much has been commoditized, brought into open source, proven out, and made readily accessible via services that you can really bring something to market and prove it out with the customer in a fraction of the time and cost. So that's really what you have to do is, is prove it. Okay. So am I hearing a little bit of the lean startup coming out of you? or Do you follow that philosophy? Um, I, I don't follow it in the sense of being a student of I have heard of it, right. and I know that people are walking around with books <laughs> and, and such things. Um, if I understand what people are talking about, then of course, you know, the, all, all, you know, the, the first thing that people used to do, and, and still do to a, a very frustrating extent when they uh, raise money, is they hire people with lofty titles of VP this and VP of that, and they fill in org charts, right? And those org charts are filled with people who... Um, fill in their org charts, and they start to build really, really um, high cost bases to prove out something that really isn't even known yet. And things change so fast that what you really want to do, and if this is what people mean by lean, I fully agree, what you want to do is you want to get out there. You want to engage in a partnership with people who actually have the need that you're fulfilling, and, um, and, and then iterate against that. But one of the things that... Uh, is true about my experience that I think is a little different than many is it's pretty business focused or government focused like okay. the things that that we've been building over the years with with some exceptions notable exceptions they're really focused on um, large scale applications that can change the way certain types of industries work or large companies or governments uh, that's different than a consumer startup right. right? Consumer startup has a, a lot of different needs, but both have, uh, I think, the same essential principles of 
what you ought to do to prove out that you've got something worth pursuing. Mm -hmm. Now, that all great points with that. Would you say, though, that the fact that it's so easy to start something can also be a bad thing? Um, I, I think it's only a bad thing insofar as people uh, maybe don't do the same type of diligence on their own motivations. Okay. You really have to have a thick stomach for this stuff, right? Or, or, or cast iron, and you have to you have to be really dedicated to do it. And just because it's seemingly easy, right? Some things are easier, put it that way, doesn't make it easy. True. Uh, True. Anyone who's doing this stuff knows that it's you know the real work is in the day to day slogging it out, uh, narrow misses, ups and downs, <laughs> and being able to you know remain optimistic and passionate at all times about getting to your goals. But uh, it, it's not easy by any means. Uh, I think the easy part is the technology part, really. Right? Technology is a lot easier to come by, a lot easier to to um, uh, deploy, and a lot of the commoditized capabilities we used to spend a lot of time on can right. be fired up in record time and low cost. And Absolutely. that's, I think, what people mean by easier. Yeah, okay. So even things like cloud computing, I'm sure you have a lot to say about that. <laughs> heard of that subject, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I think that that is having a, a significant impact and will continue to. Okay. So obviously here in L.A., you know, there's a lot going on now. Uh, we've had a slew of accelerators launching in town in addition to some that already existed here. And there's a lot of discussion around what does that mean for angels versus incubators versus where do you get the money from? So, you know, given that you've raised so much money for all of these different companies that you've begun or, or co-founded, um, what would your advice be for that person who is looking to raise? What makes the most sense for them? Um, I really believe that if you're building any type of company, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you've got the conviction that you want to see this through, that you're going to personally want to okay. make whatever sacrifices are necessary to go and, and passionately attack this beast. But while you're doing that, you also have to understand that everything that you believed about the business is likely not true. And so, therefore, <laughs> you have to be ready to, you know, adjust sure. and take feedback and uh, try to hire the best possible people. I think a lot of people skimp on that. Um, and by best possible people, I don't mean the best possible executives. I mean the okay. doers, the guys that can write code, that can actually do stuff. You know, not, not to say anything negative about uh, guys that can make PowerPoints, but, you no, know, easier to come by. You yeah. need collaborators that can actually go and uh, and innovate with you and do things that you never thought were possible. It's people smarter than you, and that's you know, obviously anything that I've done uh, that's worked out has been you know my luck in attracting people much smarter than me who are able to um, to bring things to 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 bear. Uh, if you're building something today, you really also have to take advantage of the opportunities that you're given that didn't exist in the past. You know, it's so hard to. To, to succeed in any case, you might as well take every advantage that you can. And what's been happening recently is the layers of abstraction of things you have to worry about are getting higher and higher. Used to be you'd have to get a server and get a database architect to connect, you know, right. some way to cluster that out and scale it the right way and figure out how to build all sorts of underlying infrastructure. Then you had to build platforms on top of that where you can write code and scale that. Uh, and usually you'd build something, find out eventually what worked, and then have to rewrite it mm -hmm. because you'd find it wasn't built for scale. Uh, a lot of those things have been figured out. So if you really step back, take advantage of those infrastructure and platforms that are rolling out, things like Amazon Web Services, uh, you know, EC2, sure. um, uh, platforms like Heroku and um, Force.com, Azure, all these different uh, capabilities, even Google App Engine, you're starting to find that you can test things out at low cost and Absolutely. scale them, yeah. scale them at un in unprecedented uh, ways. So uh, I would recommend that entrepreneurs focus on their core differentiation mm -hmm. and not focus on spending time or money on the things that actually don't uh, uh, offer a competitive advantage. Sure, sure. Um, what excites you the most about what's happening here in L.A.? Mm. I think, uh, L I mean... People are focusing on L.A., so I wouldn't put it completely underrated, but people don't really recognize yet the incredible explosion of creativity and technical talent mm -hmm. that is here. 
I mean, um, yeah, the amazing. developers alone coming out of Caltech yeah. and you know, places like that, I mean, do you find that you get a lot of talent, the, these people you speak of that are smarter than us, you know, are, are you finding that it's easier to get the talent that's already here rather than have it escape to other places? I find that it's, it's easier to build core teams right. here than in many places. Uh, I think there are hubs around the country that have a really smart um, Obviously, anywhere in the country you can find some, but but Southern California clearly is one of those areas. As is Boston, Silicon Valley, Austin, Texas. Right. Um, but but and New York, of course. Mm -hmm. But but what you find is that if you can build a great core team, you can also expand it with some geographic diversity with modern tools. You can collaborate Absolutely. over long, you know, far distances, mm -hmm. and you can bring together a great team. So okay. well, I think what I find in Southern California, however, is there's not only great uh, teams of um, underlying technologists. There's actually great entrepreneurs. There's people who are just I completely agree with you. Staggering. I'm, <laughs> I'm in awe of the people here. I know. I'm, I'm I'm happy to be asked to to speak on this topic. I have been maybe one of the older guys around, so I think there's some um, sense in asking me to talk on this stuff. But certainly, when you look at the the amount of talent here, it's 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 beyond anything that we've had in the past and. Uh, it's just great to be yeah. part of it. Great. Well, that, that says a lot coming from someone who's been here since the late 90s. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was only the late 90s. So if you look back at the early 90s, we'd be slogging away at it, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the upside. You know, but let's also take a, a full view here. Is there anything that you would caution people about, not just in L.A. tech, but in the general tech ecosystem right now as it currently stands? Yeah, I mean, I would caution people uh, about um, uh, essentially jumping in on Me Too ideas. Okay. I mean, it, it again, just to go back to that theme that it's not easy to build something, you've got to build something that you really believe is going to have an impact in the world or something that you really want to see in the world. Right. And uh, the idea that you can, because it's easier to fire something up, that you can take a copycat idea of something you've seen work and put a slight spin on it, you know, mm -hmm. MySpace for, you know, nuns or whatever, right? Where if, you, if you start to... MySpace to, for that, nuns. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what an know, interesting there's idea. A, there's a community <laughs> and there's a, you know, very strong affinity there. There's obviously a higher power looking over the potential success. There's a lot of ways to justify it. Get on that. I'll, I'll, we'll get there. But, you know, in the meantime, I would definitely caution against uh, what I see is really... The, Unfortunately, the majority of early stage ideas, which is a, a, a semi a seeming twist on essentially what is a me too idea right um, and uh, this is actually a time for uh, for massive disruption for for the next Twitter, the next facebook you know, the, the the next oracle you know actually uh, will be invented now there, there, there is more transition in the market today than any time since the late 90s when the internet first came in and created a, a complete disruption in, in how global business, governments, and, and consumers uh, actually interacted with technology. Mm -hmm. So right now is the fruition of that promise. And so I would, uh, I think that it's time to do something that, uh, that really is uh, unique or original. Do something that will actually change the world? I think so. Wow. So is that why you continue to do this? Because you clearly do not need to con keep going with all of these companies, but you are a serial, you really do define serial entrepreneur. I mean, what is it that drives you? Is it that notion that, wow, I'm in a time where I can literally make something that could change things, that could change the world somehow? I think that is what drives most of the, uh, of the people I admire who are doing similar things, sure. certainly what drives our team mm -hmm. um, and teams. The, the, the opportunity to play a small part in a very, very big change right. and possibly a bigger than small part, mm -hmm. that, that is really quite exciting. Uh, you, you, you won't see a lot of industries operate the same way you know, even five years from now. And this is a very, very important turning point. Great. So it's, you know, it's highly motivating, I would say. You know, it's passion. Every single entrepreneur I ever speak to, it really does come down to passion. Money's nice too, but passion, it just, 
that's the underlying thing that just resonates with everyone. So, Agreed. and I can completely understand why Digital Family is honoring you with this outstanding achievement award. So, congratulations again. All right, thank you. You're welcome, Eric Pullier, CEO of Service Mesh, and many, many congrats. And make sure you check him out. Where can we find you, actually? Well, I can't let my enemies know. <laughs> <laughs> Look up exactly. Service Mesh, people. You will find him. Actually, just Google Eric Pullier. All right. Thank you so much. Talk to you again soon. Thanks.